Let's look at this related rates question. It says a trough is 10 feet long and has in its ends the shapes of isosceles triangles that are 3 feet across at the top and have a height of 1 foot. If the trough is being filled with water at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute, how fast is the water level rising when the water is 6 inches deep? These related rates questions can be really confusing when we first read them. And that's why I have um, made a video showing a process that makes these things easier. So if you haven't seen how to make related rates easier, I'm going to use those principles here. It's very helpful. And so there's a five-part process. The first process here is we want to get a picture. Okay. So this picture here is we have a trough whose endpoints are isosceles triangles. And I have some students that want to make these things look really great and have some of these that don't really care. Um, I don't really care what your artwork looks like as long as the math gets right. But a picture does help us clarify. So here's our here's our trough. And you can put some shading on there if you want. Okay. Um, and what I know is that this trough is 10 feet long across the top. I know it's 3 feet long in this direction. And it's 1 feet deep or 1 foot deep. And I also know that water is being pumped into this thing at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. Okay, so that's what I—that's the picture. All right, now, part two of the process is to identify what's known and what you're looking for. This is very important. If you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know what you have, then you can't really address the question. Okay, so what do I know? I know that... Um, I'm looking at the water level with a given height, and that height is, let's not write it in inches, it says six inches deep, we know that that's 0.5 feet, okay? We also know that the length of this trough is 10 feet, and we also have the dimensions of the uh, triangles that we don't really need at the moment. Um, but what about this value here, this 12 cubic feet per minute? So that is, if you notice, there's a keyword rate there. That is a change in volume. And how do I know it's a volume? Because it's 12 cubic feet. So I have 12 cubic feet per minute. Okay, now what am I looking for is the question. So it says, if the trough is being filled with a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute, how fast, and the word fast is just jump off the page at you, is the water level rising? Okay, so that is a rate of change in the water level, or a rate of change in the height. We're looking for dH dt. Okay, now this is why you have to have some calculus involved, because in high school or in college, you didn't learn a relationship between the change in volume and the change of height. That can be very difficult. What we have to do, and this is part three, is we have to figure out a relationship not between V and H, but, or I'm sorry, not in terms of a relationship between dv and dh, but maybe v and h. So I know that the volume of this trough is length times the area of these triangles here, and the area of a triangle would be uh, one-half base times height. Okay, now the problem is, is that um, I know length, length is a 10, but I don't know about base, and if I try to do uh, implicit differentiation at this point, I'm going to have to use product rule, and I'm going to end up with a dBDH. See, uh, so part four of this is to do implicit differentiation, and just bear with me for a second as devil's advocate. Okay, so here this is um, 10 BH, and I'll show you why this doesn't work, because then I have 10 BDH dt. So far, not a problem. But then I have 10 H dB dt. See, I had to do uh, product rule here. I use product rule. And the thing is, is we have no idea about the change in base and its rate, okay? So this does not work. All right, so I need to figure out a way to get rid of B. And how am I going to do that is by going back to the idea of these triangles. Okay, so if I split the end of this trough, and I end up with this triangle here, what I'm going to try to do is figure out a way that I can get rid of B, okay? So what I know is I have a height of 1 for the total and I have a length of 3 for the, the, the large triangle. But I also know that there's some relationship between similar triangles here. So if I'm at height h in my water level and I have a base b, I know some fundamental relationship here. Okay, 
I know that the relationship between height and 1, so height over 1, is the same as base over 3. Okay, so that means that I could solve my base to be 3h, which in turn means that I can rewrite my volume formula as L, which is 10, times 1 half 3h times h. And so that would be 5, I'm sorry, it'd be 5 times 3, right? 15h squared. There's my vh formula. And now, when I want to do implicit differentiation, which is step 4, you're going to do your implicit differentiation here. There's not a problem because the derivative of my v, so that's dv dt, is going to be 15 times 2, that's 30h times dh dt. All right, so I'm having to use chain rule here, don't forget. And so um, do I know all this stuff? Yes, I, I know dv dt and I know h. I'm trying to solve for dh dt and that's part 5 here. It's just a solve. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my values. I have 12 cubic feet per minute equals 30 times 0.5 dh dt. Okay, so I know 30 times a half is 15. So I end up with 12 over 15. Or I can re reduce that down by dividing by um, 3 as 4 fifths. Uh, and what units am I using? This would be um, feet per minute. And that is my change in height. So there it is. Okay. All right, I hope this makes sense. Again, this five-part process is not going to make everything automatic for you, but it gets you into position for step four in particular, where you can do implicit differentiation, and from there just use algebra to solve for the variable you need. All right, so the first three steps are where students struggle. If you just practice this, go over this, draw your picture, identify what's known and what you're looking for, and then find a way to relate, not the rates, but the variables themselves, and then use implicit differentiation to introduce those rates. I hope this makes sense. Again, if you, need any question, if you have any questions or need any help, let me know. I'd be glad to help, and thanks for watching. <laughs>